Hi, David Bizard here, and you are watching Power Attack 10. If you can lend me your ears, and your eyes for that matter, see I'm quoting Shakespeare here, for just 20 minutes or so, I will give you the benefit of over 60 years of building race winning and high performance street engines. Mm. Before I go any further, I'd like to make a statement on our policy for testing uh, speed equipment parts or in fact any parts related to uh, automotive uh, endeavors. And it goes something like this. If it's really good and it's worth the money, we promote it big time. If we're telling you what you should buy, that means we're stopping you buying what you shouldn't buy. Think about that. If it's mediocre, we don't have time for it. In the main, that is. If it's a rip-off or BS, we are going to expose it big time. Please note. That is a hard and fast policy. In this edition, that is edition 68, we are going to look at what it takes to install a cam and valve train properly. This first part is going to be timing in the cam. And there's a few things that you need to know here that counter a lot of what you've been told. So watch it to the end. If you watched Paratech 10 from a couple of editions ago, you'll remember that I was panicking around trying to find the camshaft that I was going to install in Sean's Model A 350 Chevy. right where I left it and I also found the other two as well so I've got three camshafts here that are going to into that engine now you'll notice some other hardware on the table here I don't know if it's in frame but let me just check well maybe it wasn't fully in frame but let me tell you what we've got here this is a comp cam's adjustable timing chain. I can advance and retard the cam about seven or eight degrees. This is the split cover that facilitates the use of this timing chain. It splits here so that you can not only advance and retard the uh, cam without having to dismantle the front end of the engine, you can also change the camshaft just by taking this off undoing these bolts, lifting that up, hanging the timing chain so that it stays on the bottom gear and pulling the cam out once you've undone the little uh, retainer for it. So, why am I going to all this trouble to test three cams? Let me tell you. Any test which is done without the aid of an adjustable cam timing deal does not give you proper test results. They can be skewed enormously. With all that said, let's get to it. Before we get going here, a couple of points I want to raise. I think it's time to take a closer look at the cam specs so that you know what I'm doing here. Glasses on. Right. The uh, camshaft here is a flat topic cam. When I get a cam, a flat topic cam from Comp, I always take advantage of their case hardening service. So these are case hardened flat topic cams. Uh, the um, uh, intake duration at six thousandths is two sixty eight, exhaust two seventy three. Uh, this equates to a fifty duration of two twenty four two thirty. Um, lobe lift. I'm going to be using one six rockers on here, so the lift is going to be about 
five, <clears throat> 20 on the intake, right? And on the exhaust, I'll use one fives and that'll be about 490, right? But I'll do some experimenting there. Now then, the question is, the closest cam for this, what will be a nine and a half to one compression with these flat top pistons, is gonna be about 107 degrees lobe center line that will be the optimum right with those size valves now if they had the bigger valves in like 20216s then we'd be looking at probably about 108 now I've only got 106 and 108 and 107 falls between the two so what should I use well let me make a statement here that you need to keep fixed in your mind it is better to have a camshaft which is one degree too tight than one degree too loose if output is your number one consideration. Now, this is not a very long cam at 268 and 273. So, we, we yes, we will suffer a little idle quality if we put the 106 in, but we're not likely to suffer any power loss. As for the idle quality going down, well, it's still a short cam, so we will still have more than acceptable idle. First step is to install the cam. As you do so, paint up the lobes with good molly grease. Now there's plenty of cam lubes you can use, and that's okay, but this stuff always works. And if you're gonna follow the routine that I use for the break-in, this is more than adequate for the job, and it's kind of got a safety margin to work with. There we go. Notice I've got an extension here. Just a simple plain old bolt to get a better purchase on it. But the last bearing is the one that is the nuisance. But we will get it. There we go. Right now see that it's a bit it's a bit sticky because of all the grease on, on the bearings, but I tried it beforehand, it spins nicely. So that's how it's got to go nice and smooth and only the only sticking there should be the the grease here are the components that we're going to deal with next here I've placed the retaining washer on top of the thrust bearing and the chain here has not been pre-oiled right it would just make a mess of this white paper so I have not pre-oiled it yet Normally I would soak these in oil, an oil bath for about 10 minutes before I installed them. Well the bottom crank gear that I was waiting for finally came in. That took a week to get so be aware that they sometimes aren't easy to get. As a provisional check that everything's rotating smoothly your first move should be to put on the cam gear and see that the cam turns smoothly. Now it won't turn necessarily easily because you've got all that break-in goo on the cam bearings but it should turn smoothly with no hitches like this. Next move is to install the bottom gear right what we're going to do is we are going to check that these two gears are square with each other right so the first job to do is to smear some grease on the inside there for greasing the gear you can use something like this apply it with a brush and a dab on the crank won't hurt either especially around the keyways now when it comes to installing the gear we need to make sure that a we have it in the right position and b we use a suitable tool like this you can get this from comp cams 
The particular gear I'm using is a three keyway one. That's because that's what I could get the quickest. There's no reason for you not to use a single keyway gear, but be aware that those that were on the emission engines, and I can't remember the years they were on, but it was quite a few years, spanned maybe 10 years. The keyway times the cam in 10 degrees, sorry, four degrees retard, right? That's a little inconvenient, but not the end of the world. Um, this is the gear I recommend that you get. Now, we are going to, each keyway here, it, times the cam in different. There's a, an advanced an advanced one, retired one, and a straight up one, right? And uh, this is the one we're going to use. So take a look with your glasses on like I am, and check you've got the right keyway. So let's now install it. Tap the gear into place. Next, temporarily install the cam gear onto the cam. We're just going to check alignment here, so these only need to be gently snugged out. Then we check to see how well aligned these are. This is absolutely smack on here. But before installing our comp cams adjustable timing gear, there's a couple of points I want to raise. Turn the gear over and you will see that it has a Torrington race on the back here to take care of the uh, thrust bearing duties. Now normally the stock cam bears on here. It does so by the fact that there's a taper on the camshaft that way that pushes the cam towards the back of the engine so the clearance here is taken up there's, otherwise there's nothing stopping it moving backwards and forwards well it's a nice cheap way of doing it but it's not a hundred percent so this uh, if you have a roller bearing a roller camshaft you need something to control the end float this is why this is a good gear to use because it can be used with either a roller or a flat tappet and it allows the flat tappet cam to be stabilized in terms of end float so since i almost always use an adjustable timing gear i almost always use one of these rollers so that's another reason for getting one of these comp cams adjustable gears this is the cam button i'm going to use it is a roller type one but you can get plain nylon ones now to be honest the nylon ones work very well and are cheap the now next move here is to turn the crank over until we get to tdc now we can pretty much see when that is and what we will find is that there is a zero on that gear there which needs to be pointing straight up, right? That's the what position to get it. Now, we've just got our top gear loosely installed. So now we're going to turn the cam, right, until these dots here line up with that one. So far, so good. Now comes the fiddly part. Now here are four timing chains. This is the one that came in the comp cams kit. So it's brand new, never used. This one here has done about two hours on a break-in. This one here has done about 25 hours. And this one's done about, I'd say 50 or 60 hours. Now, they're all top-notch timing chains but they're all going to be slightly different lengths so I'm going to try this one for no I will I think I will go with this one this is the uh, one that's been broken in but it's also one that I got from comp cams so we will see how a broken in gear 
uh, timing chain setup fits to a brand new set of gears. So let's go and tackle the most difficult part of this installation and that's fitting the chain on. So here we go. First move, place the chain on this gear. Now remember we've turned this camshaft and the crankshaft so that the timing dots should align. So we get that timing dot and if we can fiddle it on correctly we should end up with that being installed like so. No, we got it round too far. Uh, let's try that. located. Next move we install our thrust button and the thrust button retaining washer. Here's what the loosest chain out of the four delivered. Now I don't want to use this because this engine has to have the least mechanical noise possible. The timing chain that I'm going to show you next will be just right in terms of both noise and power output. This one here won't sacrifice any power output. In fact it may actually be slightly better. But what you will do is get spark scatter at idle and on the overrun. Right? So it, it's going to be a bit noisy. On a race car you won't hear it. So if your timing chain ends up like this, with about that amount of slack, although there's a lot of people tell you that's too much, on the dyno it tells you slightly different. That works fine, but it's noisy. Well the timing chain I picked proved to be just right. Now I'm hoping you can see the amount of slack in there. Right, I'm not putting a lot of force on it, but you'll notice that this gear wheel is not moving any that you can perceive. That's how we want it. The previous one I showed you had too much slack, but it would work. Next move is to place the securing plate in position. Now it's time to install our fixing bolts here. The first move is to put a dab, and I just mean a dab, of blue Loctite on the thread. There we go. Now then, we'll put that in and just provisionally tighten it up. Last job here is to torque the uh, fixing bolts to the figure specified in the instructions. I think it's possibly different for different types of uh, uh, engines that comp cams make these uh, uh, deals for. Anyway, that's 18 foot pounds there and that snugged them up nicely. Right, there's no need to go mad on tightening them. They don't need to be super tight and they also don't need to be seized in there with Loctite, so that's why I used the blue. First install the timing wheel adapter into the crank, just nip it up. 
so it's snug. Here's our degree wheel. Ignore this second scale in here. That's something I've added and I'm going to show you what that does after. But for now I'm going to do this as if this was a conventional single disc timing wheel. Install the degree wheel and a pointer. Your first move here is to establish an accurate TDC. What we're going to do now is install the uh, dummy lifter so that we can check how much lift has taken place. To do that you can use one of these comp cams dummy lifters. This one has got a radius on the bottom so it can be used on a flat tappy cam but it, and it must be used on a roller. Right now you can use a lifter. Best to use a solid lifter to do this and a push rod but I'm going to show you how to use this. Insert it into number one intake like so. Set the dial gauge on the end of the dummy lifter then turn the engine backwards until you get onto the base circle. That's when the lift stops occurring and you're now as low a lift as it can be. So now turn that to zero like so. Starting at the base circle with it set on zero, turn the engine over until you find peak lift. That's 100, 200, 300. We are at 320, 327. Cam card says 326. That's pretty good. Right, now we're going to start the business of timing it. So what we do now is we turn to full lift again. Right. And we set the dial indicator to zero. Zero. Now then, what we are going to do now is turn the engine backwards until it's almost a whole hundred thousand stand. And we're going to raise it up until we get to 80. Now that is 20 degrees before TDC. And we note the reading on this dial here which will be there's 90 91 and a half We write that down. We then turn the motor in a forward direction until full lift and back down to 80. We then take another reading. This time the dial gauge on the outer scale reads 130. So 92 was our first reading, 130 our second. We add them together, that's 222, divide by 2, and that gives us 111. That's nowhere near where we needed it. Okay, so why were we at 111 there and not 102? Stack up of tolerances. Now, I've got to admit, this is a bigger stack up than... I usually see. But let's go through and see where all the things that can be off slightly for it to all stack up in a direction totally unfavorable to your quest for horsepower. First off, the keyway in the crank, that's about a one degree deal there. The keyways in the uh, gears there, I'm guessing that they could be about one degree. Camshaft could easily be a degree off. Now it was supposed to be ground four degrees advance, right? Um, but it m might have mistakenly been ground zero. Now I didn't check that because I've got an adjustable wheel here and I don't care where the cam's ground. I'm going to time it in so it's right 
regardless. And that's what you're going to do. So right away we've got three degrees. And that would lower our situation to being timed. Let's say all of those are working in our favor, right? Instead of being off the wrong way, they were off the right way. Same error, right? That means our cam could be six degrees more advanced uh, without any of this artificial correcting it timing. So six degrees more advanced makes it 105. So now it's only three degrees behind where it should be. Is that a problem? Well, assuming that peak power is at 102 degrees advance, right, and in this case that's not a big assumption, it almost will be, plus or minus about one degree. Being retarded kills off power faster than being advanced. In the, and I'm talking about performance down the drag strip. Now, your retarded cam the deal about it making more horsepower at the top end compared with less is not as prevalent with this cam because this cam has, for this engine, near perfect timing. So if we retard it, all the sequences go off. If we advance it, all the sequences go off. Whereas if it was on the wrong lobe center line angle, if we retard it, all the exhaust sequences can get better. If we advance it, they can all get all the intake gets worse, right? So it, it doesn't work as well. Um, so what we can say here, the more accurately your cams events are timed, the more important it is to put it in right. How much difference can it make? Well, with the super trick valve seats that I, that I produce on my uh, Goodson 3D uh, equipment, I can get to a situation where the cam company's advance figure compared with what is actually required is five degrees off and that five degrees on a on high 500 horsepower engine is 25 horsepower. Do you want to throw 25 horsepower away? No, I'm not saying you're going to, but if somebody put this combination together without an adjustable and didn't check it, they will be 30 horsepower down. No problem whatsoever on a 350 with about a 10 to 1 compression. So, what you need to do here is to reckon that you're always going to have a problem with getting the right timing. So time it in. Now, I've got to say that 11 degrees is a long way off. And I probably only see one in... I'd guess 15 engines like that. So it's very fortunate as it turns out that this is an example that I can show you. So Install the degree wheel and a pointer from a retarded position below full lift bring your dial indicator up to 80 that's 20 before TDC as before it's going to read 92 now then set the inner wheel to read the same 92 now remember this scale is backwards and double the size so 92 is to the left hand side of 90 not the right hand side as here now let's bring it on round until it comes back down to 80 again that shows just a tad over 111 degrees which is pretty much what we calculated now come on, admit it, wasn't that just a piece of cake? As far as the double wheel degree wheel goes, Moroso did make some, some of these big ones for big blocks, but I think they've stopped making them now. Um, and uh, so I made mine out of a comp cams uh, uh, 
deal. They don't need to be quite that big, but if anybody wants to buy the rights to make these, any reasonable offer will do, right? So just uh, um, in the comments below, just say that you'd like to make it. That's davidbizartseminars.com. How do we fix all that? Simple. A little bit exasperating, but nonetheless simple, right? First off, we've got a three key weight gear there, bottom gear, which means that if we put it on the advanced position, we go from 111 degrees down to uh, 107, right? That's still five degrees too much advanced. However, our comp cams degree wheel will go a little over six degrees. Actually, I think it goes to about eight. Uh, either way so we can correct it from that now had we just left it at 111 degrees how much power would we have lost well we spent all that money on a very functional comp cams cam right 75 percent of the power we could have gained over the stock cam we will have thrown out the window so and that cam I know from past experience that cam spec works very well in a 350. It makes big torque numbers and big horsepower numbers for such a short cam, as you will see. So timing in your camshaft is a very worthwhile deal. And with that, I'll leave you. Right, so don't forget to like, subscribe, notify, hit the button for St. Jude's. That's the dollar thanks button uh, and share. Right. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next Paratech 10.